Well, hello and welcome everyone to today's webinar. Today's webinar is going to be looking at how you can improve your research management with reporting using Illumin, our knowledge and reference management tool. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Susanna and I work as a marketing researcher at Softlink IC. In today's session, we will have SoftLink staff standing by to help and answer any questions that you might have. So please feel free to use the chat and Q&A functions you can see in your Zoom toolbar down below. So today I will show you how Illumin can help you deliver reporting on metrics and improve on your research management. Today, we'll cover why metrics matter and what they are, and what to consider when you're putting together your reports, and of course, how Illumin can help. We'll also take a sneak peek at Illumin and see how it can produce awesome metrics and great reports. But regardless of the system, reporting is only as good as the data you can access and an understanding of the metrics that you're looking at. So having said that, let's jump straight in and think about what is a metric. So metrics are measures of quantitative assessment. They're commonly used for assessing, comparing, tracking, performance or production. So examples from out there in the real world include the unemployment rate or the GDP, the gross domestic product of a nation. But metrics that we might recognise from our day to day might be something like satisfaction scores or the average resolution time of a research query. So what's so important about reports from a research management tool like Illumin? And more importantly, how can reporting help me? Well, good or great reporting from your research management tool can have a big impact on your customer service. But it can also provide insights on how you can improve your research management. This reporting can showcase or reflect customer service metrics, so you can see actionable insights related to your user's experience. Customer service or user reports can include a number of different potential metrics that gauge your overall performance in your research team. They can be used to track how well you're meeting your goals and help you identify areas for improvement. So how does Illumin work? It's an inquiry and research knowledge management tool. It's cloud-based and it's a specialised reference management tool that we've built from the ground up to help knowledge managers like yourselves deliver their uh, service delivery. So it might look something like what you see on the screen. So you can see that the inputs come in the form of questions or queries or requests. One of the great features about Illumin is that it can handle multi-channel requests. So whether they come in via email, a phone call, a face-to-face -face conversation, or even a web form you might have sitting on your intranet page, Illumin can handle them all. Once they're centralised in Illumin, this starts to build some valuable data around the requests and research queries that you're managing. Illumin also has a unique feature called a knowledge base, and it's something we're really proud of. And we'll look more into the knowledge base when we take a sneak peek at Illumin. So inside Illumin, you're starting to build all of this valuable data and also grow your knowledge base. Outputs from Illumin obviously include the answers back to your users or customers. But what also starts to build in Illumin as an output is some amazing reporting, analysis, and also the opportunity to bill back to a department if that's something you'd like to set up. So what happens to all of this data? Well, as I mentioned before, it sits 
in a powerful area of Illumin called analytics. You can also access data easily and quickly in saved views or by using filters in the advanced search, all of which we'll have a look at shortly. And of course, it wouldn't be a request management system without reporting. So you're probably thinking, why does this matter to a research team? Well, reporting really matters. Reporting helps you monitor trends in support and performance quality, helps you identify areas of performance or support quality that need improvement. Reporting can help you improve on the service delivery of your research team. It can help you check if your goals are being met. Of course, help you meet and exceed those customer expectations. It can help you plan your team's work schedule and workload distribution. And it can help you make better strategy decisions that are based on customer feedback. So all of this beautiful data will make excellent reports to your team. And you're probably going to look a little bit like this guy. So these reports can go through to your team, your peers, or to management. But before you start putting these beautiful reports together and sharing them with your fabulous team and co-workers, there's some really important things to consider. Any report that you put together needs to have an objective. So think about what is your main objective for this report? Is it to update, to persuade, or to inform? Who's your audience? And what do you want your readers to know? Think about where does this data come from? The fantastic thing about Illumin is that it can be the single source of truth for reporting, regardless of the channel of contact. This makes your data centralised and accurate and consistent. What format will this report take? Will it be a series of images? Is it going to be a written analysis or interpretation or a series of data tables? And how will you distribute or present this report? Will it take the form of something like we're doing today, um, a presentation, or will it be via email or in another written form? It is quite a bit to think about, I know. So why don't we go and have a look at Illumin and see what we can do. Let me just switch across to Illumin. Oh, just one moment. So this one here, here we go. So this is Illumin. And one of the first things you'll notice is the dashboard. Now the dashboard is a fantastic feature in Illumin because it provides metrics that appear with your login. So at a glance here on the dashboard, you can see some metrics about your team's activities with zero clicks required. How good is that? Let's have a look at one of the metrics that you might look at on your first login. In this widget here, we can see what our researchers are working on, the requests I have with my team based on priority. And if I hover over my team member, Gina here, I can see that she has five urgent requests sitting with her. If I'd like more information about those, all I need to do is click on that link that sits with Gina's chart, and I can see the urgent requests at a glance. Now, this is a great way to help me improve response times and manage the workload of my team. So I can make some time to talk to Gina about these urgent requests, or I can have a look at what the content of that request is and track any information relating to it. Let's head back to the dashboard now, and let's have a look at how we could use our dashboard for some reward and recognition, maybe for our top performing researchers or teams. Further down in our dashboard here, I've got a widget that shows me the top researchers by requests that have been closed. And I can see my research manager here has closed 11 requests in the month. I can toggle that to see by fortnight or by week. No one's been working on anything this week. Now, this is a great way for me to do a little bit of reward and recognition, not necessarily acknowledging that these people are working the hardest, 
but perhaps I've got them working on a queue where they're actioning short requests with a short turnaround. I can also go up and have a look at what my teams are working on. So back up at the top here, you can see in this widget, I've got an overview of my teams. I can toggle this to see what they've got by priority or by time remaining. And you can see my library team has 28 requests overdue. My research team has only seven. So maybe as a bit of reward and recognition or a bit of fun in the office, I can work on getting those overdue requests down. But at a glance, I'm able to see how my teams are going. Now, across the top of Illumin here, we've got some great little buttons that let us that lead us straight to some excellent metrics. So I can see I've got new requests. So these are all the requests that have come into the system and are brand new. Heading back to the dashboard, though, I've also got my overdue requests or the team overdue requests. And again, at a click, I can go ahead and access those. If I wanted to sort them by priority, I can just click in here and just start typing the priority I'm after and I'm able to filter those requests by priority. Let's head back to the dashboard now and into the advanced search, I wanted to show you how we can use filters and saved views to create some easy to access regularly used metrics. Let me just scroll down and reset my view. So I've got all of my requests sitting in the screen here. And I can go ahead and add some extra columns here if I wanted to track feedback that is coming into my team. Let's move feedback comment and feedback rating across and update those columns. And you can see that the last two columns I've added sit at the end here. One of the great features of, one of the many great features of Illumin is I can sort these columns by just clicking on them. So you can see now I've sorted my feedback rating to positive, neutral and negative. Let me just add some more in there. And here's my neutral and my negative. Nobody likes negative feedback, so I might click into that one later and have a look and have a bit more information around what happened there. Now, as I showed you before, I'm also able to filter by just clicking in the column and typing the priority that I'm after. Now, let's say this is something that I'm doing on a daily basis and I wanna go ahead and save this view because we're all about saving the clicks, right? So in Illumin, you can definitely do that. We can save our view. We might adjust or delete some of these columns to make them a bit easier. And once we've saved this view, what we can actually do, let me just save this view. So that view's now been saved. But what we can actually do is we can load those saved views. And we also have the option to pin them. Now, once they're pinned, they appear up here in my main menu bar. So once I've logged in for the day and I'm getting started, I've had a look at my dashboard, I might head over to my pinned views and have a look at my feedback. I don't need to run the query again because I've saved and pinned the view. And at a glance, I can see all of the feedback that has come in and all of the comments that sit around it. If this is something I'm doing regularly and I'd like to export it to Excel, don't worry, Illumin's got you back there. Down the very bottom of the view, I've got the option to export to Excel. So I can export this to Excel. And once I open that, let's have a look. As the data appears in Excel, that means that I can then go ahead and manipulate this data further. Maybe I want to create some pivot tables. Maybe I want to do a little bit of filtering. Maybe I want to create some pie charts. But it's a great way for me to get on top of some of those key metrics. The other pin view I've got are my urgent opened requests. So at a glance, I can see what's sitting in my system that requires urgent, um, has an urgent priority and requires action. Let's now just load our dashboard up again, and we are going to head off to another area of Illumin, which I mentioned very briefly in the beginning, and that was our analytics. 
Our analytics feature is amazing. So capturing all of those metrics through those request forms or those request queries means that we can report on a bunch of stuff in analytics. So why don't I stop talking and we'll run a few. So to get started in analytics, I need to select what's called a cube and I'm going to select my request cube. And what that does is load up a series of dimensions or fields that I can report on. So let's say I want to see how many requests my team get a day. Let's scroll down until we find request and I will add that in. And then I'm going to also, actually, let me just add in that one I want. I want requests all. And I'm also going to add in requests by the day of the week. Click on play. And you can see that I have now got a summary of the requests that I've had come into my system broken down by day of the week. Now, if I wanted to drill down a little bit further or add another dimension or field to that request, let's add in the type of channel that that request comes in via. Run that query again. And you can see I have this beautiful breakdown of not only the days of the week that my requests are coming in, but how people are contacting me. So off the top of my head, this is a great way for me to help manage my staff workload, maybe look at who's going to be answering the phone versus waiting at the desk for a query, or who's looking after my instant messaging channels. Now, in case analytics couldn't be any more amazing, you can also represent these visually. So you can see here that I've got my data represented as um, a graph, but maybe I want to group it a little differently. So if I move channel up to be my columns and I run the query again, you can see that I've got a breakdown of the day of the week here. And then each of the banded lines represents one of the channels of communication that has come through. Now, we mentioned way back in the presentation talking about putting our reports together. So once you've run these queries, you can actually export them as an image. So once that image has been exported, it's a PNG or a JPEG file, you can go ahead and then paste that. It's transparent, which is why it looks a little funny on the screen there. But you can go ahead and paste that into a report that you're putting together and then provide the appropriate analysis or observation that goes with it. Let's run another one, hey? So let's do a brand new analytics. Let's go ahead and choose that request cube again. Now let's say I want to see how busy my team is receiving requests broken up by department. So let's add uh, department in, and then let's also break it down by who's looking after it in the team. And then maybe let's have a look at what's the current status of those. So if I run that query, oh no, that's not what I wanted. Let me just go back here and I'll just add the department name in there. There we go. That's what I wanted. So you can see this one's a little bit squishy. So what I might do is I might move that one up there and see if that looks a bit better. No, let's move it down here. There we go. That looks a bit better. So you can see I've got the status of the query here. And you can see, by the way, how easy it is to shift those uh, fields around and rerun the query so that what you're actually looking at makes sense because a big part of the metrics that you're collecting need to be uh, something that's easy for people to understand. So you can see my status here are queries that have come in that are assigned or closed, currently working on or if they're new, and the department that they've come from. So at a glance, I could use this maybe to reach out to sections of my organisation that don't use my knowledge and research team. So I could drum up a little bit of business and do a bit of a communications tour, just explaining what we do here in our research team. As an aside, using this analytics feature anecdotally, we've heard from Illumin customers telling us how much time they've saved being able to use this feature means you can save these queries so that you're not going in and running these every time you need to produce weekly or monthly reports, which makes a big difference to the compliance load for reporting on all of the activity in your teams. 
So speaking of saved queries, let's go and have a look at some of the ones that I have saved. Here's the, save, here's the area where the queries get saved and you can save as many queries as you like once you've configured them to turn out the way that you like. And here's a slightly different view of the requests by day of the week. So I'll load that query and you can see the breakdown there for the team, either the library or the research team, the channel of communication and the day of the week that it's come through. And as I mentioned briefly before, this is a great way to help you reduce or shift costs in terms of staffing, but also help plan your staffing schedule. Let's load up another query now and let's have a look at the average time spent on a query. And as you can see, once they're saved, they are so easy to go back to. So here we have the average time that my researchers are spending on their queries, and this is in hours. So this is a great way to help me start a conversation with my team. So I can see here I've got Lynette and Ricardo spending an hour and a half on queries. So I might start doing some catch-ups with my team and I might start with Lynette and Ricardo and just have a bit of a chat to them. Is what they're working on quite complicated or involved or do they need some help? Can we take some other queries off them so that they can work on these a bit more efficiently? So this is a great way to get an idea of how much time my team are spending on their queries. Now, Illumin captures a lot of metrics and it has this great feature where you can tag queries as they come in. So we all know what a tag is. It's an easy way to group Ob, uh, requests by subject or topic and later on we can go and research that and search for it. Let me load one of my saved queries here where we look at our tagged requests. So why would something like this be useful? Well this helps me look at common queries that are coming through and have been tagged and you can see I've got three queries that have come through tagged as alpacas. Now, this would help me see what kind of questions do I get quite a lot of? Is there a common theme or am I getting a lot of repetition in the questions I'm getting? Now, you're probably wondering why is she rabbiting on about tags like this? Well, it is a great segue to our knowledge base. So this is our Illumin knowledge base. Now, this is a customer or user-facing system where you are able to group or present common and frequently asked questions through to your research team. So something like that tag query, which we just ran, would be a great way to populate content into your knowledge base. Now, over time, as you're answering queries in Illumin, you will build a knowledge base where you can nominate that popular questions or the latest questions or even frequently asked questions be published in your knowledge base. And this starts to build a shareable, comprehensive, but most importantly, audited database of information. And this is a great way to steer your users or customers across to an area where they can help themselves find the answer to their frequently asked questions. The knowledge base is searchable. So let's search for alpacas. And you can see I've got a little bit of content here that can maybe answer the question that I've got burning about alpacas. Let's head back to the knowledge base home and you can see that you can group them by category. Now, these categories are completely controlled by you in the setup. And if you'd like to, you can also create subcategories. So I've created a category here called farming. And you'll notice that there's a permalink, which means I'm able to publish that maybe on my intranet homepage for people to access easily. And I've got a subcategory covering alpacas. And all I need to do is let my users know they can find information on the knowledge base that might help them answer their query. And here you can see topical issues, the difference between a llama and an alpaca. 
important information. I'm sure you'll agree. You can also include images and links in your answer. So it makes it really useful for people to find the answer themselves. So what's great about this knowledge base? Well, it, control, it lets you control and organise the information that appears here. So this lets your users become empowered to find the information that they need. Now, lastly, before we wrap up, Let's have a look at how all of this beautiful data, which we can represent visually, can go into a report that you can then share with your peers, management or other colleagues. Now, using all of the rich analytics that have come from Illumin and using those saved tables or those images that we looked at earlier, you might create a report template that looks a little like this. So here's a little report template that I created because I thought, how can I show you what the end product looks like? You might be working in Illumin all day running your queries, but what would it look like once you shared that information? Well, here's a little dummy mock-up of a report. And you can see my report for November is going to show some key metrics. And then as I continue to scroll down, here's some of the images that I saved, which show the average time spent by my researchers. And I've got room to do a little bit of observation and analysis. And here's another report in a slightly different format. But this is a great way to show what my research and request queries look like by day of the week and by priority. So you can see the blue, the darker blue here is the urgent area. And at a glance, you can see that Wednesday, I had quite a few urgent requests come in. So a great opportunity to provide some analysis there. I've got some others here, requests managed by researcher and priority channels. So great way to show workload distribution. And then the last one I've got here is the request by team and by channel. So this is the output of what all of those wonderful metrics and analysis in Illumin's analytics um, and also the dashboard um, can do as part of your reporting capabilities that come from your research team. So let's switch back now to my presentation. And let's do a little wrap up. I can't believe time is already almost up. So today we covered metrics and why they matter to your research team. We had a look at what to consider when creating those reports. And of course, I hope I showed you how Illumin can do that effortlessly. We would love the chance to talk to you more about how Illumin can help. So feel free to get in touch with the team at the email address you see on your screen or visit our website for more information. And if you're already one of the lucky ducks already using Illumin and you've got questions from anything that you've seen today, you know that our support team will be more than happy to help you out. Thank you so much for your time today. I really hope you had a quick look at what Illumin is capable of. And if we can help any more, as I said, feel free to get in touch. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of your day.